40. You know, it's straight tough. You know, it's you know, pretty embarrassing um, to you know, be out there. And, um, you know, that's not, you know, being a Laker. You know, I've only been a Laker for a couple months, but I know that's not it. The Lakers are a horrible team. That's no secret. They could even be the worst team in the league. However, this season isn't like other years of futility. They have the pieces this year, and although calling them potentially playoff bound was a stretch at the beginning of the year, the talent level is nothing that would suggest instant cellar dwelling. Lonzo Ball was projected to be the savior of this Laker roster, someone who would instantly become a leader for this team, changing play on the offensive end and his ability to maintain an impressive level of efficiency in all areas of the game. The latter trait has become a laughable projection, being that Zoe's shooting is now the butt of endless jokes surrounding the team with the worst record in the West. Contavious Caldwell Pope was viewed as a tremendous compliment to Lonzo for his lack of needing the ball to be effective in aggressive perimeter defense. Turns out Caldwell Pope really shouldn't have the ball in his hands at all in the half court, with ball stopping outrageous shot attempts that kill the flow of the offense at once. Brandon Ingram's dominant summer league saw the prediction of a quality scorer that could take over the offense whenever desired, however Ingram's major knock nearly halfway into the year is his complacent play on offense, as he seldom chooses to take shots from teammates who simply aren't as skilled as he is. Julius Randle was engaged in a competition for the starting role, which he has unreasonably lost, as in a bench role he's playing like the skilled energy player that the team expected, albeit the energy is not always there. Brooke Lopez looks clumsy, old, and slow, and often is relegated to jacking up long-range attempts all day, despite being touted as a double-double machine from Brooklyn. Jordan Clarkson seems like the perfect bench player to come in and immediately score on some nights, yet his inability to defend and unnecessary hero mode on offense are nagging issues that may suggest he can never be more than a reserve. Larry Nance Jr. only seems to hurt the starting lineup's offense he has been illogically placed into, as his perceived better defense in energy when compared to Randall is simply not a fact anymore. Luol Deng's situation is absurd considering Mitch Kupchak indebted the team $54 million over the next three years for his services. If only Deng actually practiced, perhaps the Lakers would be able to get a $20 value out of the 32-year-old who in actuality plays like he's 52. Corey Brewer can defend, but can't shoot. Tyler Enders can't defend, nor can he shoot. And Alex Caruso is a keeper for his thick voluminous hair, but not much else. Bogut might as well use a walker to get up and down the court, and Ivica Zubots and Thomas Bryant have barely been used, whether for better or worse. Luke Walton still has potential, but potential alone is not keeping Laker fans happy due to his seemingly se senseless substitutions at times. Everything listed previously, whether it be chalked up to the inability to meet expectations or the lack of gelling in the team, is contributing to the demise of the 2017-18 Lakers. This team, despite possessing the most talented roster of the ongoing five-year run of Lakers garbage, seems to be falling under that umbrella yet again ultimately making the pain exponentially worse, and the thirst for a big name free agent that much more increased. However, on an individual level, it hasn't been all bad. The rookies from this class of young Lakers are impressing day after day. Josh Hart's de strong developed body and ability to finish with contact makes Brandon Ingram's toothpick frame look worse and worse. Hart looks like the perfect two-way player to eventually start, if not from today until the season's end. He rebounds as if he were a couple inches taller and magnifies the fact that the Laker bigs are absolutely terrible at boxing out and plucking the ball from the sky with tenacity. Even Larry Nance Jr. adds to that problem, as he oftentimes refuses to put body on man when contesting a defensive rebound. Jr.'s minutes, though, have become expendable due to the borderline elite offensive play of fellow power forward Kyle Kuzma. Kuzma plays nothing like one would expect from a 6'9 power forward, though. His touch around the basket with floaters and running hook shots is already among the league's best for a power forward. And similarly, his three-point stroke is crazy good compared to others that play the position. Despite his unforeseen brilliance in those categories, they misjudge Kuz as a power forward, implying his, his rebounding and interior defense is up to par with other fours. Because of this, Kuzma is not as versatile as it may seem, as he's a little too slow on the perimeter to keep up with most threes, 
but not strong enough to pose defensive resistance against fours. That's not to understate his consistent lights out scoring though, as the Lakers have come to rely on a late first rounder for much of their point production. Finally, the rookie that the press will never stop following, Lonzo Ball. First off, to set the record straight, Ball is not a bust. His shooting stats are absolutely atrocious, and advanced metrics do not favor him either, but there's no way Lonzo will not be a starter for years to come. He may have struggled mightily to score points for the bulk of the first half of the year, but he consistently did every other part of the game well. His core vision and feel for the game is next level, already placing him as a top 8 passer by my standards. His rebounding is impressive for a point guard, sparking tremendous outlet passes once he grabs a board, utilizing his 6'6 frame. He thrives off blocks, flying in from the weak side, and has quick hands. And even though his perimeter defense isn't outstanding, it has been serviceable and better than expected. Lately, he's even mastered the pick and roll as his three-point shooting as of late has been deadly following his man sagging off. Don't let this distract you, and it probably won't from the fact that the Lakers are horrible, perhaps even the worst team in the league. It shouldn't be that way, but as it stands now, it is. The pieces are there to be a force in the future, but until the future is the present, the Lakers will keep being bad. This video may seem overly pessimistic, and that's because it is. Maybe they will go on, to, on a run to combat this existing 8-game losing streak, but all signs point in the opposite direction. What seems clear, though, is that the Lakers are the most disappointing team in the NBA. Maybe not to franchises of other teams, as they'll say they knew the Lakers would never be as good as their delusional fans thought. Stay strong, Laker fans. The young guns will eventually come together and become dominant. Probably not this season, though. Okay guys, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and comment. And uh, if you have any constructive criticism, make sure to leave that in the comments below or just to talk about the Lakers or the NBA in general. Uh, I'll be happy to read your comments and possibly respond. And uh, if you have any ideas for other potential videos, let me know down below and I'll make sure to get to it. So hope you guys enjoyed and uh, have a good day. See you in the next one.